Hey, hey, Welcome back to your <laughs> What's up Yara fam? Welcome back to another exciting episode of Yara to You. I'm Miss Tina and for today's art lesson we're going to be needing some paint. Oh, oh, there you go. So we're going to need some paint and we're also going to be needing some... Oh, get in there! And also some cotton buds. So let's get fine with Priscilla and let's get drawing. Bye now! Okay, welcome to today's art lesson. Today we're going to be doing a landscape painting and it's going to be in the same kind of style as the last painting that I did. So it's very expressionist. So um, expressionism is using colour to create a feeling or an emotion rather than painting things exactly as we see them. And this one's going to be a little bit more abstract. Um, so it's not going to look realistic. And I'm going to be using something that you might have at home. Um, these little cotton tips to make marks rather than using the paintbrush itself. So the first thing that I'm doing here is I'm just doing my background colour. Um, so I'm doing a blue sky but I'm kind of fading it out as, it's, as it moves down to the horizon. So I'm blending a little bit of white in with my blue. And like I said, it's not meant to be a realistic painting so that's why I've, I've chosen to do a pink kind of purple colour um, and then once I finish that okay so now I've let it dry I'm going to start to do my tree so I've got a whole bunch of cotton tips and I'm just dabbing on some colour. Some darker colour and I mixed a bit of white in with it to get a, um, a pink. And these marks that I'm making with my cotton tips create that nice picture of a tree. And I'm adding some highlights with white. Now I'm painting in the tree trunk. And some branches. grass and then the final touches I'm going to paint a, uh, a little lake with some swans so what I really want you to get out of this is how you can use different objects to create different marks um, and different textures to look, in this case, like a tree. Have a go.
Hey guys, welcome to Urara to You, Music Edition, Episode 4. So today we're going to be looking at some different time signatures. Now, time signature is the name given when you're counting, when you're playing drums. So if you remember from the last episode, we were doing one, two, three, four, like that. So that's called a 4-4 four, four time signature. And that's the most common time signature that's used in a lot of music. It's very easy, it's very simple, and it's very straightforward. Now today we're going to be learning one that's called 3-4. So you're counting in threes in your head when you're playing. So it goes something like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, like that. So the whole time you're doing that, on the hi-hat, you're just counting in threes repeatedly. One, two, three, one, two, three. And to help you, you can hit number one a bit harder than number two and three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Hey guys, welcome to Urara to You Music. Now today we're gonna to be talking about something called consumable products. Now a consumable product is something that needs replacing every so often. So in music, when you play a musical instrument, it's things like strings, picks, and drumsticks. So we're going to go down to our local music shop, Rock City Music, and we're going to have a look at what they've got, and we're going to try and buy some stuff. Let's go. Seatbelt. Right, so we're in Rock City Music in Alice Springs. We're going to buy some strings, some picks, and some drumsticks. The strings that I recommend for electric guitar are Didario EXL 110 electric strings, gauge 10 to 46. Whoa, hold up, what does gauge mean? So gauge means the thickness of the string. Today we're going for a set of 10s. A set of 8s are usually the lightest, and a set of 13s are usually the heaviest, so 10s lay somewhere in the middle. The strings I would recommend for acoustic guitar are Didario EJ26 Phosphor Bronze Acoustic Strings. Hold up, what does Phosphor Bronze mean? So with my recommendation of acoustic strings, I believe that Phosphor Bronze has the nicest sound. Phosphor Bronze is what the strings are made of. Okay, so the strings that I recommend for classical guitar are Augustine Normal Tension Classical Strings. Back up, what does tension mean? So the tension of the string is how tight it is. You don't want it to be too loose and you don't want it to be too tight. So we've gone for normal tension, which is just right, just in the middle. The drumsticks that I recommend are Promark TX5AN drumsticks. What does 5A mean? So 5A is the weight of the drumstick. It's not too heavy and it's not too light. It's right in the middle. It's just right. And the pick that I recommend is Jim Dunlop USA Nylon. Hold up, what size pick do I need? So a good size pick to get would be 0.73 millimeters. I also recommend that you get nylon picks because they bend rather than snap. They're very flexible. Thanks to Rock City Music and Alice Springs for allowing us to come in and film. Okay guys, so hopefully that has helped you understand what consumable products are a bit better. And when you next break a string or lose a pick or break some drumsticks, you'll know where to go and what to get. Thanks for watching, see you again next time. Oh, oh, it's time for STEM, another episode of STEM. Urara Science, Technology, Engineering and Math. Good afternoon guys, Mr Jeremy here. Today we've got something exciting for you. Today we're going to be constructing one of these little things. It's called an MBOT. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so let's get going. So, the first thing we do when we open our kit, we have our instructions, very important. 
So our instructions will obviously show us how we're going to um, build our mbots. And also we can see we've got all our different components in here. So first we have our chassis, which we'll attach everything to. We'll have uh, two motors that will connect to each of the wheels. We have our power pack. Um, we've got four AA batteries there. We've got our sensor. We have two wheels so that we can move around. We've got our um, little computer, which importantly has Bluetooth, so we can access it remotely. Four brass studs. We have a whole heap of different sized screws which will help us put everything together. And of course, we won't be able to do that without a screwdriver. All right, let's get started. So looking at the instructions, we can see the first four steps that we're gonna go through. And first of all, we're obviously gonna get our chassis and we need to attach a motor to each side using uh, the long screws. two wheels, attach one to each motor and make sure that we uh, get those screws in nice and tight otherwise it'll wobble a little bit when it's moving just like so. So now that we've done that we go back to our instructions we can see steps five to eight. Now our next step, step number five is to attach the rollerball to the chassis and that will enable the MBOT to make some really nice tight turns and it also acts like its third wheel. Now our next step is to attach the sensor to the front of the MBOT using a couple of those smaller screws. So now that's done, we've got to attach our four brass studs uh, to the top of the MBOT. So we turn it over and they screw in themselves. They've got a thread on the end of them, which makes them nice and easy to attach. So we don't need our screwdriver for them. And we're going to attach the M core to the top of those studs. So once that's done, we're back to our instructions. We're almost done. We're doing really good. 9, 10, 11, 12, just those steps to go. So firstly, um, step number nine, we attach the Velcro, uh, just as you can see, to the chassis there. And the other side of the Velcro will attach to uh, the battery holder. And then we screw in uh, the M core, which attaches to those brass studs, just like so. And we're getting really close to finishing our M bot now. The next step is we've got to attach our uh, left motor and our right motor to the M core, like so. And we have to attach our battery pack to our M core as well, so that everything's talking to each other. So the last step is simply just to put our batteries in, making sure we've got the positive and the negative up the right way. Our four AA batteries in, and now our M bot is complete and we can switch it on. There we go. We've finished our MBOT. Looks pretty good. Now there's two ways that we can uh, make it move. We can make it move using our little remote here, which has got the directions um, on there. And we can make it move by programming it um, using um, a program called Scratch, which most of you will know um, by now. Um, so for today, we're just going to be uh, making it move using um, our remote. In our next lesson, um, I'll be showing you how to uh, make it move using Scratch. Good stuff, guys. It was fun building with you. We'll see you very soon. Over and out.
Good afternoon to our students, families and friends of the college and welcome to another exciting episode of Health with Mr Zane and with Mr Liko. Last time we introduced social well-being to you all. We looked at what social well-being is and how social well-being can affect us. We also provided for you two worksheets to complete. We hope that you have worked hard towards completing these worksheets as this will continue to help you understand how the choices that you make can affect different parts of our well-being. Today, we will continue to talk about social well-being. We will also remind you of what social well-being means and how it affects us. We will show you some more scenarios that you, our students may have experienced here at Urara College and try to help you understand how the choices that you make have an impact on your social well-being. At the end of today's lesson, we will have a simple worksheet for you to complete to help you with your understanding of social well-being. Let's head over to Mr Zane, who will remind you about what social well-being is. Social well-being is having good and positive relationships and being able to live with, talk and connect with other people most importantly, your family and your friends. Watch these scenarios and have a think about whether the choices that these students are making are having a positive or a negative impact on their own and other people's social well-being. Come on, let's take a look. In this scenario, you will see Buddy and Jordan having fun and playing an exciting game of table tennis. Have a look at the way they socialise, especially at the end where they talk to each other. What are they talking about? Is it a happy conversation? How does this relate to their social well-being? Take a look and see what ideas you can come up with. Man, you're really good at this, aren't you? Oh, thanks, man. Man, we're looking for another player to come and join our club. I think you'd be amazing at our club. Come and join us. You'd be awesome. Thanks for the invite. I don't really know anyone who plays around here, though. Don't worry, man. I'll introduce you to all the fellas. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll meet back here. Sweet, bro. See you then. Sweet, bro. That's us. In this scenario, Buddy and Renisha are playing Connect Four. Another student sees Buddy and Renisha having fun and asks to join in. Think about the interactions between the students, how they talk to each other, and if they decide to include the other student in their game. After you watch the whole clip, decide whether you think that the way that Jordan and Renisha acted towards the other student would have had a positive or a negative impact on that person's social well-being. And think about how that person would feel afterwards. Let's take a look. Oh, one more. <laughs> Connect four. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> hey, that's like fun. Can I play? Ooh, who are you? You're not from our community. Friends only. Go away. Another game? Yeah. Alright. Oh. oh. Okay then. To help you with what we have learned today, please turn to page 12 and page 13 of your week 3 workbooks. This is a chance for you to think about and write down some ideas about what your family, your friends and your teachers might say about you. Do you think they will say you are a happy person? You are good at sport? that you work hard in class, that you are polite and always use your manners? These are just some examples to help you understand social well-being and how your connection with others can impact on how they relate and talk to you. This can be with your families, your friends, teachers and other social circles. Write down as many positive ideas as you can. Next time, we will move on to the next part of our overall well-being, this being our physical well-being. We will introduce you to what physical well-being is and how some of the choices that you make have an impact on your physical well-being. 
So stay strong as we continue to take you on a journey to making good choices and understanding your own well-being better. Till next time. G'day and welcome to another Clontarf segment on your Rara TV. Today we're going to show you some tricks. Many, many, many years ago, when I was a bit younger, I used to ride one of these a little bit. I'm going to have a go at a 360, but uh, first I might just need a little bit of a warm up. Give it a go. Famous Dantini here. I don't have any kicking tricks. I've got a genuine magic trick called the invisible pin. And here it is. Ooh, sharp too. Ready? Watch closely as I use the pin. to sew my lip. Don't try that at home kids, very dangerous. So if you've got any tricks up your sleeve, no more there, but if you have, film them and send them in to your RTE. Hi, I'm Connie Kirkman. And I'm Cecilia Conway with this week's edition of URTV. We've had another jam-packed week, including a visit from some of our NRL players. But first up, let's take a look at all the action around this year's Empire Cup tournament. More than 30 Alice Springs students played in the annual event. Our Brumbies made the grand final against Tennant Creek but unfortunately lost by a mere four runs. We need to bring these kids through because we've got a proud tradition. We're not a big population, we're spread out over plenty of land and country. But being a proud mob, to see these kids come through gives us no more joy. Today we um, learned how to play cricket and got to make new friends who we've been seen before. And it was fun playing cricket. Nothing's going to stop me from doing cricket. Our first yard church for 2017 was attended by many to see the installation of new stuff. with a morning tea afterwards. You may have seen a new face within the Klontaf team too. His name is Pierce Little. We caught up with him for a quick chat. How's it going? My name is Pierce Little. I work with the uh, Klontaf Academy at Yarara College. Uh, this is my second week here. I've just moved up from Victoria with my partner. and. Uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, working with the fellas. We use sport, all kinds of sport, to help the boys out through their uh, studies in school. Uh, I've already found out I've got some family here, so that's, that's good both sides, I think. And um, yeah, just looking forward to the next couple of years here, and hopefully I can uh, leave a good mark. The only truck driving simulator in Alice Springs had made its home at Juara College. This week 
Its aim is to get more of our students' job in the mining industry. And our students received a special visit from some of the NRL's Parramatta Eels players. Students heard from the league stars why it's important to stay in school. That's all for your TV for this week and we look forward in seeing you next week. Have a great, great weekend. weekend. Bye. <laughs>